In the headlines, government breaks ground for a $50 million rehabilitation project on the EO Libla Highway. Nine top CSEC students in the north make their secondary schools proud, and Catholics open a $2 million church building in Portsmouth after the original building was destroyed in a 2004 earthquake. I am Kenny Williams with the Channel 5 News, back with the details right after this. Thank you for staying with us. Ground was broken on Tuesday, marking the commencement of rehabilitation work on the Eolibla Highway to the tune of over $50 million. Here's more. Prime Minister Skerritt told the gathering China came to our aid after Erica demonstrating the country's depth of its commitment to Dominica. He said upholding the One China policy was the greatest tribute we could pay to China. So I'm happy this evening to usher in the commencement of works on this crucial archery to and from the capital city of Roseau, which also connects us all to the historic town of Portsmouth. Much of Dominica's medium-term economic and infrastructural development is located towards the north of the island and sits within close proximity of this Eolibla Highway. It was therefore very important for us to arrest any deterioration in the quality of commuting across the west and northwest coast of this island. We appreciate that local motorists are accustomed to these periodic inconveniences, but it must have been a hard and harrowing experience for visitors who were unfamiliar with our roads and who had to divert so frequently. Ladies and gentlemen, this project consists of the construction of three bridges, 13 culvert crossings, upgrade of drainage and restoration of several areas afflicted with road edge failures, slope stabilization, subgrade and pavement failures. The rehabilitation works are scheduled to be completed by March 2019. More on this groundbreaking ceremony in our next newscast. Moving on to the political scene, the main opposition United Workers Party is calling on government to state a position supporting China's anti-corruption stance. Political leader of the United Workers' Party, Lennox Linton, spoke at a press conference on Tuesday. It follows the party's return from a nearly two-week visit to the People's Republic of China on the invitation of the ruling Communist Party of China. The UWP team engaged with the ruling party and government officials in China on a number of other areas of mutual development interests, including China-Caribbean relations, innovation-driven development, education and training, sports and youth development, elderly care, renewable energy utilization, and ICT and light manufacturing opportunities. For the avoidance of doubt, we were not invited to China to send any signal to any leader or any political party, nor was this an initiative to involve the parliamentary opposition in state-to-state -state matters normally handled by the sitting government. The UWP leader said the objective of the visit was to explore opportunities to strengthen the party's capacity and capability for better oversight of government as well as better representation of people while in opposition. Linton also expressed concern that Dominica does not have a resident ambassador to the People's Republic of China for nearly a decade while it seeks to deepen relations with the Asian giant. Dominica still has no resident ambassador to China more than nine years after Ambassador David Xu demitted office. This unfortunate state of affairs is made even more troubling by the fact that just a few years ago in 2015, the ruling Dominican Labour Party was working over time to establish diplomatic relations with Malaysia. He urged the government to appoint a suitably qualified Dominican national as ambassador to the People's Republic of China. In education, nine students are putting the spotlight on their secondary schools in the north coming out of the CXC CSEC exams. Idona Jean Baptiste explains. The St. John's Academy, Portsmouth Secondary School and Northeast Comprehensive School have also produced top performers in the May-June CXC CSEC exams. 
the students are on the Ministry of Education's list of 35 top performing students from secondary schools across the island. At the Portsmouth Secondary School, four females are proving that their academic performance can be on par with Roseau schools that are normally in the lead. Danisha Langley has done just that, achieving 10 grade ones, a feat similar to that of Dijana Willis of Convent High School. I went into the exams with a positive mindset and I tried to be confident and just know that God will take me through it. I think it means a great deal for my school to help to bring out their name, make it a household name and show them that the bad stigma that they try to associate our school with, it isn't true and much, there is much in store for our school and the students here have great potential. Well, my advice to young people, first of all, the best thing you can do is just develop that personal relationship with God and just seek him first because without him you cannot do anything. He's the one who gave us life and breath and granted us wisdom and knowledge. So just seek him first in all that you do. Following Danisha with remarkable results from PSS are Jesse McCarrett with eight ones and one two, Shida Francois with seven ones, two twos and a three, and Anjani George who scored six ones, one two and a grade three. I feel very elated to know that I was one of the top four at my school and at in my country. So uh, what's next for you? Um, I'm going to study agriculture and entrepreneurship in college um, in September. Yeah. Why agriculture? Normally you don't hear young ladies um, uh, saying that they want to study agriculture. Well, since I was in first form, um, when I did agriculture, I, f like, I fell in love with it. Okay. I don't have a specific career that I want in agriculture. I just know that I want to do agriculture. Agriculture has a lot of money if they didn't know, you know. Annie Fu Zheng of St. John's Academy, who's of Chinese descent, is among the 17 top performing students in the country. She earned nine grade ones and two grade twos. She is currently in Canada, where she will remain to further her studies. This success means to me that my hard work paid off. The sleepless nights, the struggles, the sacrifices, everything that I put into obtaining these grades, it was worth it. And I am satisfied, although I know that there is room for improvement. To my school, seeing that it's, I would say, basically new, it means that we put the school at a position where they are able to say that we have top students in CSC. So the publicity, it reflects positively on the school as well as ourselves. What's next on my agenda pertaining to academics? I intend to attend university where I'll be taking life sciences a course on life sciences so that I can pursue pediatrics as my career. Another product of St. John's Academy, Keyshawn Peter, also obtained nine ones and two twos. He and SMA's Omondi McIntyre are the male students with the most grade ones on the list of 35 top performers. 16-year-old Keyshawn told Channel 5 News he always put God first in the exam room. So before each exam, you had to pray and ask God to bring back everything you studied. It was new territory, honestly. It was something I'd never experienced yet, having actual work to complete. <laughs> because normally, I'd finish all my work early in my other forms, but fifth form, it got difficult. I plan on going to the Dominica State College um, in September, and after that, university hopefully. Um, to the young men, you know how they always say that the Young ladies are coming up and the young men are struggling behind, not really focused on their work. Try and get focused on your work and achieve. Study hard and work hard towards your goals. Over at Wesley's Northeast Comprehensive School, three friends from Marigot outdid their schoolmates in the exams. Kimandra John Baptist had the best scores for that school with eight ones, two twos and one three. When I walk in on the road, you know, people will be like, congratulations on your success and, you know, you have made your village proud and everything. It was, it's very great. I'm going to be attending Dominica State College 
where I'll be majoring in accounting and uh, um, economics. And then I will, you know, go, uni go to university. An aspiring architect, Shirl James achieved six ones and four twos under trying circumstances as she had to deal with the death of her father while sitting the exams. I had to try my best to um, deal with the situation still while going through my exams. So I, I, I'm very proud of myself for what I did, even though my father wasn't here to see my success. He was always there with me, always helping me out. Like anything I needed, he would always motivate me to do better. My family is very proud of me. They said that every that he would be very proud. Naomi Scotland with six ones, two twos, and a three noted that she felt much pressure to do well. My family, they actually, they all messaged me because I was at camp and I didn't get my results. So like they messaged me and they were like, I heard that you came out in the top 45 and after I was like, really? It was very surprising. Okay, as was mentioned, all of you, you, you come from Marigot. Of course, this school um, has students from Kalinago Territory, Wesley, Woodford Hill, and so on. Um, is it a big deal for you that all of you, you know, three friends from the same community, you know, has, have achieved that kind of success? Yes, it is. Um, the people of Marigot, the, well, the people of Marigot, they're actually very proud of us also. In more top stories, it's taken more than a few years, but Catholics in the Portsmouth area can now rejoice with the blessing of their new church building. Bishop Malze, who was present for the blessing of the altar, called the weekend ceremony a simple blessing, but for those present, it was a special day. The church was destroyed by an earthquake in 2004, measuring 6.0 on the Richter scale, but rebuilding efforts actually started on September 3, 2011. It has been a long and challenging journey raising funds for the project here and overseas. The Portsmouth New York Church Rebuilding Initiative gave $330,000. Government contributed $100,000, while NBD gave $50,000. Bishop Malze donated $12,000, while the Portsmouth Parish raised a $1 million. Parish priest Father Herman Chaplis is pleased that the project was completed under budget. My friends, over the years, we raised two million one hundred forty-four forty-five thousand eight hundred and thirty-seven dollars and ninety-two cents. That's what we And our expenditure thus far is just over two million dollars. And I want to say to you, we have no debts. So we shall this is a debt treasure. Bishop Malze says the church will be consecrated at a later date when the ceiling and other remaining touches are completed. Bishop Malze drew inspiration from Ezra to explain the significance of the new church building. So that they were so wrapped up in the word that they began to weep with joy. And Ezra was saying to, to, to them at the end that the joy of the Lord is our strength. This is what this place should be for us, a place where we experience joy, the joy of the Lord. When we come to the sacrament of reconciliation, that we, be, we even can weep for the things that we have done that are not so good. And that we, are, we receive the graces of God, we are showered by, we, by the graces of God, and we are so wrapped up in it that we can weep with joy that we are liberated. This is the function of this place, a sacred space created for God. You are watching Channel 5 News. Coming up, we'll show you how the Cooperative Societies League is making it easier for high school students to meet school expenses. Welcome back. 
Mobility for police officers being enhanced with four vehicles to various police departments. The value of the vehicles is estimated at $330,000. One has been assigned to Mao Police Station, St. Joseph Police Station, the Special Services Unit, and Immigration Division. National Security Minister Reuben Blackmore officially handed over the keys to Police Chief Daniel Carbon on Monday. Recognize the importance of policing to the overall development of this country, and for that we have to ensure that the police is adequately equipped in order to effectively and well execute this mandate. During the last financial year cycle, um, the government of Dominica made available 12 vehicles to the police department. And this financial year cycle, we are again committed to do, ensuring that the police force is provided with the requisite number of, of vehicles in order to facilitate it actually, its actual work. While acknowledging the new fleet would enhance police response time, Superintendent Richmond Valentine cautioned his men to take proper care of the vehicles. Over the last year, the police force received a fleet of vehicles from the, from the government of Dominica, and that is a clear manif manifestation of the government's commitment in ensuring that the force has the requisite resources as we are mandated to ensure a safe and secure environment for citizens and visitors. It would be remiss of me, however, if I did not offer words of advice to the drivers within the police force. You must conform to all the guidelines as outlined in the force's policy on the use of police vehicles. Additionally, you must always drive with due care and attention. You must drive in a manner that will always be in control of the vehicle. Speeding is not acceptable. Coming back to education, where the Ministry of Education is reporting a 79.4% pass rate in English at the 2017 CSEC exams, a slight decrease from the 2016 figure of 81.6%. The CXC Registrar says in spite of this decline, Dominica's performance in English is still above average. As far as the school's performance, both Convent and SMA recorded 100% pass rate in English A. All other schools secured at least 60% and above. As far as math is concerned, there was a slight decrease from 2016, a 48.9% overall pass rate. The 2016 math average was 56% compared to previous years. And in comparison to the previous years, we have not done too badly. If we have to look at 2014 and 2015, we are just below par. But um, there are lots of work that still needs to be done in, English, in math to bring us up to the level that we are supposed to be performing. Although I should say at this point that we are still above the regional average. Although we have dropped this year compared to last year, we are still above the regional average. So I would encourage principals to continue placing more emphasis on math at schools. In terms of overall performance in math at our schools, five schools scored 60% and above in math. The highest score was 94% from the Convent High School and St. John's Academy, 92.3%. A total of 1,266 candidates wrote the CSEC exams in 32 subject areas. Meantime, there was a slight decrease in the overall percentage pass of students receiving grade 1, 2, and 3 in the CSEC exams compared to 2016. This year, we recorded a 78.4% pass, whereas in 2016, there was an 81.7% pass overall. Two schools showed significant improvement in their performances. Isaiah Thomas Secondary, 17.2% increase, and Wesley High School, 7.2% increase. The ministry has made it clear that these are all preliminary results. Official results will be released later when certificates will be issued. In related news, commenting on the 2017 CSEC results Monday, the Minister for Education said government's investment in education were yielding results. 35 students from 10 secondary schools obtained six or more grade ones this year. The minister applauded Isaiah Thomas Secondary and Wesley High School for the improvement in their performances. Isaiah Thomas Secondary recorded 17.2% and Wesley High School 7.2% increase in their results this year. 
it is important to acknowledge these gains at our schools because while we direct and implement policy at the ministry level, we are heavily dependent on our partners within the schools who directly impact student achievement. This is why a major component of the education budget is allocated yearly to training and professional development of our teachers and administrative staff. We are seeking always to improve the quality of teaching and learning at our schools and to develop a supportive and enabling environment for application of best practices. It's the minister's view that teacher quality remains critical to successful schools and government is working to provide competent teachers with the knowledge, skills, attitudes and perspectives. Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt announced in the most recent budget address that particular attention would be devoted to training of special education teachers and parents of struggling learners. Here, we are demonstrating a willingness to tackle issues related to learning at all levels so that all our students may have equal opportunities for success. One such idea for enhancing teachers' skills is the delivery of a diploma in education targeted at graduate teachers at the secondary level. Teachers who have a degree but no formal teacher training would be encouraged to enroll in that program at the Dominica State College. And parents are being advised to support their high school aged children if they care about success. President of the Dominica Cooperative Society's League, Algonon de Galry, spoke at the League's Scholarship Award Ceremony on Tuesday. Adiola Xavier, a top performer at this year's Grade 6 National Assessment, received the Joff Robinson Scholarship based on merit, where she is expected to attend the Convent High School. Meralda Thomas received Sister Alicia Scholarship based on need, and she is expected to attend the Isaiah Thomas Secondary School. Partial scholarships went to Anilia Joseph, Corinne Mesme, Jonathan Robin, and Gilo Jean. The parents must play a major role in ensuring that the child succeeds. This role must be manifested in the interest that is shown. Such interest must be one of a caring nature, one where keen interest is shown. Also, parents must take a very active role and support the child in every step of the way. If these basics are done, then there is a high possibility that the child will succeed at high school. So parents, you have no excuse not to do all within your powers to ensure success since a heavy burden has been lifted from your shoulders and placed on that of the league. Manager of the league, Phoenix Belfield, also addressed the ceremony. That's news, your sports highlights, next. First up in sports, there were wins for Club Lubia and Newtown Juvenile Football Academy in the most recent games in the 2017 Fast Cash Harlem Football League. Club Lubia handed Aeropost Dutch United seven goals to four to capture the 2017 Seinman Cup in the Harlem Football League. For Club Lubia, Randolph Peltier scored three and two own goals from a Dutch United defender. Olis Noadon and Ian Severe got one each. For Aeropost Dutch United, Kasim Peltier netted twice, while Caron Luis and Christophe Gervier scored one each. In another encounter, Newtown Juvenile Football Academy defeated Standards Bar Icons four goals to nil. Scoring for the Academy were Curdell Joseph, Owen Murphy, Jarel Laville, and Randolph. With this win, the Academy has secured qualification to the next round of matches. 
Next up, St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots skipper Chris Gill found his form when it mattered to help his team score the highest total of the Caribbean Premier League this season and beat Jamaica Talawas by 37 runs for a place in the playoffs. The winning team was sent in to bat first in Monday's game and scored 208 for the loss of three wickets. Gail Top scored with an undefeated 71 of 55 balls, while Evan Lewis closely supported with 69. Set an unlikely target of 209 to win, Talawas replied with 171 for 7 in their 20 overs. Tervon Griffiths was Jamaica's highest run scorer with 42. The next match in the competition will be between Patriots and Trinbago Knight Riders on Wednesday. Next up, softball cricket now has a new champion. VF Inc. brought the curtains down on the 2017 Big Edge Gifortusa softball cricket tournament with a convincing 56-run win over Cornells recently. VF Inc. took first knock and scored 123 for 7 in a match reduced to 15 overs due to a late start. Micah Joseph added 33, Jelani Robinson 18, and Kazimi Benjamin 13 runs. Steve Williams picked up 2 for 12 and Connie Lugi 2 for 22. In reply, Cornells failed to challenge the score posted by VF Inc. and was swiftly bowled out for 67 runs. Connie Lugay was their lead scorer with 28 runs. Ryan Roberts picked up 3 for 13, Kurt Martin 2 for 10 and Kazimi Benjamin 2 for 1. On the volleyball scene, Team Dobnek won the DAVA Business League Ballarama in a recent activity organized by the association. Three business teams participated in the event, namely Bank of Nova Scotia, Domlek, and Dominica Prison Services. Domlek and Scotia played the opening game where Domlek won 2-0. In game two, Domlek had similar fortunes when they beat Prison Services 2-1 to secure a place in the finals. Scotia and Prison Services then battled for a place in the finals against Domlek, where Prison Services won 2-0. Finally, Domlek took the first set 17-15, Prison Service bounced back to win the second set, 21-19, but Dominic closed things off with the win in the final set. Meantime, National Volleyball coach Erickson Leblanc says the remainder of the year is expected to be a packed one for the association as it gets ready for the women's tournament carded for September. We have the women's tournament coming up in September. After that, we're going to have our local tournament, which will start in November. Normally goes to about three months. And then from there, we would start preparing for the under-23 in July. And the women um, qualification starts in, uh, in the 7th of, of, of September. So we travel the 7th to the 11th. So we start on the 8th and then we play for four days and that will be in Antigua. The women's group are made up, I think, St. Uh, Kitts, St. Martin and Grenada and Dominica is in one group and then St. Lucia, French St. Martin and Guila and I think St. Vincent is in another group. So again right now we have to look as a national squad to redeem ourselves from where the men did not find a go through the final rounds and then we're hoping that all women can bring us through. He says training will intensify ahead of the September event. The women training continues and then we're going to increase we're going to increase the training days. We initially started off with three days and then we cut it down to two days, but now we're gonna go either three or four days training for the women because now we, we no longer have to concentrate on the men, so we can only concentrate on the women. So if we can push in at least four days, because we have less than a month to prepare for and then we're in the rainy season. So sometimes we lose certain days. Finally, we can tell you that the community of Scottshead could boast of having domino champions when Dolphins dominated the sport recently. Dolphin from Scottshead are the champions of the 2020 domino competition sponsored by New Indian Insurance Limited and Caribbean. They defeated Tremors in the grand finals by 105 points. Final scores, Dolphins 605, Tremors 495. On their way to the finals, they got the better of Swansea from Pottersville, whereas in the other semi-final match, Tremors defeated Valence from Monwatchet. Over 18 teams from Rung Dominica took part in the big one day competition. That's all the time for sports. Join us next time. It's time now for your weather update. Good evening and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I'm your presenter, Annie Corrette-Joseph. 
A trough system was the dominant feature across the region today, which resulted in partly cloudy to cloudy skies across the Lesser Antilles. Visible satellite imagery showed few low level clouds over Dominica during the course of the afternoon, resulting in general partly cloudy to cloudy skies. Radar imagery indicated some scattered showers over the Lesser Antilles during the afternoon. Conditions for tonight, partly cloudy to cloudy skies with some scattered showers. These weather conditions are expected to continue into tomorrow, partly cloudy to occasionally cloudy skies. Sea conditions, slight to moderate with waves up to 5 feet. Let's take a look at conditions into the next three days. Again tomorrow, Wednesday, partly cloudy to occasionally cloudy skies with some scattered showers and on Thursday partly cloudy skies with some showers the Atlantic high pressure system will be the dominant feature on Friday partly cloudy to cloudy skies with some scattered showers a tropical wave is expected to approach the area by late Friday into Saturday resulting in an increase in cloudiness and shower activity as we move into the weekend conditions across the region tomorrow partly cloudy to cloudy skies with some showers can be expected over the Lesser Antilles. On the international scene, partly cloudy skies can be expected in New York, some possible thunderstorm activity in Miami and Caracas, cloudy skies in London, and clear skies in Beijing. The sun will rise tomorrow at 5.52 a.m. and set at 6.24 p.m. For up-to-date information, log on to our website at weather.gov.dm or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Please remember that we are in the hurricane season. Please keep updated. Thank you and good night. To end the news, the headlines again. Government breaks ground for a $15 million rehabilitation project on the EO Libla Highway. Nine top CSEC students in the North make their secondary school proud, and Catholics open a $2 million church building in Portsmouth after the original building was destroyed in a 2004 earthquake. Feel free to contact us at news at mapin 2 kcom You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Kenny Williams. To all viewers around the world, we thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow.